Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Mecha Guy Kotsu vs Backlog Mountain 4. I think it's 4, I've lost count at this point. And basically what that means is I've gotten a little behind on kits and figure reviews, so in order to catch up on all of those, I'm going to basically do one video day for a while until I get through them. So videos will be a little bit shorter, maybe a little less in depth, but these are pretty much all the things that I still want to cover, get built, get up on my shelves and get into the collection that just didn't get priority videoed in the last while. This also does give me a chance to unpack all the kits that I have in storage that I haven't unpacked in quite some time. So it means size comparisons can come back properly again, backpack fashion shows can come back, and hopefully this time I can get my office a little better than I had it before, so I can include more things in the videos to make them a little bit more fun. So what can I say? Let's get right on into it. So yeah, today we're going to be taking a look at the high-grade gun cannon Kukuru's Doan's Island version, which of course is the origin version of the high-grade gun cannon, that classic that harkens all the way back to 1979. Not the origin version, of course, but the original OG version. The origin version came in the origin set of movies or OVAs, and this right here is basically a variant of that. So that does mean the core of this kit right here is the 2000 and 16 version of the Origin gun tank with a bunch of new parts on it for the one we would have seen in the recent Gundam movie, Kukuru's Doan's Island. This builds up pretty much the same. It's that same awesome Origin quality. I will mention this is a polycap build, so it does feel a little bit more classic than what we'd be getting nowadays from Gunpla, but anyway, it looks good, it feels good. Let's get right on in to the aesthetics. So jumping on into the aesthetics, and this is one absolutely gorgeous retro looking kit right here with that cool new Origin flair. Of course this is heavily based on the Origin version of the gun cannon, but with that very classic colour combination all the way back from 1979. Overall, this is one thick boy of a kit. The detailing is absolutely fantastic. And I will mention, you do have options when it comes to the backpack. I will mention them when we get around to the aesthetics. But for now, I'm going to leave the backpack on because it doesn't really feel like a gun cannon without it on there. I'll also mention that we do have the normal two-peg backpack adapter there. So that does mean this is compatible with other high-grade backpacks. And so is its backpack with other high-grade Gundam kits. Jump into that full 360 spin and this is an absolutely gorgeous kit. This is straight built by the way, I haven't done anything with it, so that means no panel lines, no top coat, no nothing, and it does look phenomenal. We do have two shades, or should I say even textures of plastic here. The red armor is very shiny, the almost brownish kind of grey that's on here, that is a semi-matte, so it does mean you do have a lot of textures right out of box, and we do have a nice clear piece for the visor up in the head. I will mention it would probably be good to stick like a foil sticker or chrome out in behind that to get a little bit more oomph behind it or even detail up the details inside of it. But for the most part, this is absolutely beautiful. If you're a fan of really kind of down and dirty militaristic sort of mechs with that old school Gundam feel, this has it all. With some extra detailing, maybe some battle damage and all of that, this can look like one heavy realistic mecha. So when it does come to the model kitty type aspects on this, we do have some seam lines that are kind of really obvious, like the one in the side of the head right there. That goes all the way around the head, which is very classic Gunpla. But for the rest of them, they're hidden in kind of what I can only describe as lines that are made look a little bit more intentional. AKA, they've kind of widened the line to make it look like it is part of the armor. Everything else looks absolutely nice. The nub marks aren't so bad. They are on the edge of some of the parts, so it is easy to bite into those by accident. You may need to take some extra caution with some of these, but the worst ones are towards the back. And as for mold lines, there really aren't that many, and none that I can really see right now. So pretty good. The color separation on this is very, very good, and a little bit on the mixed side. For example, that section right there in the chest, which is, well, I assume is some kind of Vulcan, let me know if I'm wrong, has been nicely color separated and comes through on a layer. That nice layer that's coming through on the clavicle right there. However, the same level of detail is not applied to the Vulcans up in the head right here, which should be in grey as well, so that you'd have to detail up yourself if you want that to look perfect. On the whole though, an absolutely gorgeous looking kit, rocking that really nice, heavy, detailed, panel-lined Gundam the Origin kind of aesthetics. Anyway, let's check out what it comes with. So now jumping into the accessories, and as usual with an Origin kit, you get quite a bit in here. So that is the two variants of the backpack, one with the cannons, 
one with the missiles for both variants of the gun cannon. Next up we've got that absolutely awesome gun cannon style beam rifle as well as a right hand trigger finger holding hand for holding onto it and besides that we've got four other hands for a grand total of five hands inside of this box. Always very nice. Finally then we do have a sheet of decals for decaling this up. Once again we've got variants of some of them to make this either unit 104 or 109. So first up when it comes to the hands in here we do have a choice. So we have one or should I say two of both of these. I'm just going to attach on one of each so you can get the vibe of what they're like. And what we have in here is a fist which looks just like this right here. Extremely nicely sculpted, grey on the front and the back. And we also have a widespread open hand. Once again, extremely, extremely nicely sculpted, including some great detail on the palm, as well as all the individual fingers. These attach in the regular ball joint kind of way, so it does mean they have a nice little bit of articulation while they're in there. And both are definitely quite nice. The widespread one isn't really a dynamic one, more of a resting one for either holding onto the rifle or for that typical lying gun cannon pose. As for the backpacks in here, we do have two. This is the one I've had on it the whole time. I'm really impressed by this in a lot of ways. First off, we do actually have some nice functioning pistons. So when these are raised up and down, these do actually extend, which looks fantastic. But it's the little bit of red on the side armoring these up that really does make this look unique and part of the mobile suit when it is attached. So next up in here, we do have the missile launcher, which is the total most tryptophobia looking missile launcher I have ever seen. I mean, I mean, just look at that right there. Some people, some people will not be okay looking at that. But again, this is absolutely fantastic looking. Again, these origin kits are serious kits for serious builders. Even though for high grade, which isn't the most crazy detail, just look at this. We've got two shades of gray. That is a dark gray and a light gray. It's all detailed up very, very nicely. We've got the white and the gray coming through it there and the missiles around that end. It just looks so, so good. Not only does this backpack look fantastic, but it attaches on fantastically too. So it just pops into the usual adapter part like so and looks almost flush to the mobile suit once it is attached. The collar like sections either side of the gun cannon's head does mean that these can fit once again flush down either side of the head out of the way and this has just been designed ever so nicely. Again we do have the full working of the pistons while this is attached and this is so so impressive. So to swap the backpacks it's super simple you just pop it off like so. Grab the Tripto Launcher ride here and that just pops on in the exact same way. Even hiding those little connectors that connects the missile launchers onto the backpack. We've got the same amount of movement on here as well. So these can aim up the way like so. We've got nice articulation in the head as well to make sure that the gun cannon can look upwards while firing as well. This, this is ridiculously cool. Next up in here we have the rifle and an unusual kind of origin style. This is detailed out the ass. The surface detailing on this is phenomenal. I will mention the hand just didn't come attached to it like this. You can take that off of course. There's a little peg in there to hold it on but I just built it like this because it well it's got nothing else to hold on to. We do have a splash of color in there for the yellow on this side and that is the only moving aspect on this so it can move outwards just like so. Attaching this on is the usual ball joint attachment like so. So that right there is what it looks like attached and this is one of the coolest high grade beam rifles around. It's just so thick, so awesome and looks like it means business. The gun cannon has one hell of a beam rifle. This holds on rock solid, does what it needs to do, has one moving part and it's pretty damn cool. So lastly in here we've got this little sheet of stickers. Now I didn't use this during the review for two reasons. One because I'm trying to kill the backlog and two because I find these don't look that great on the kits. They have a bit of a line around the outside, but I do love the design of these ones right here. So I'm going to add one of these stickers on because I really do like the design of the white base and the numbered ones. So I'm going to go with WB104, which is Kai's configuration or Kai's unit. Not necessarily because I prefer the character Kai, it's because I actually prefer the configuration on the actual gun cannon. So I'm just going to stick this on as you do, stick it on like that, and this is what it looks like attached. For the most part, this doesn't look too bad, but you will notice under some lighting, you will kind of catch the light and you'll see the outside aspect of the sticker. Now, you could painstakingly cut around this to make sure there is no edge. Some top coat may or may not cover that up or blend it in a bit, I'm not sure, 
but for the most part this isn't so bad. But if you did pop a lot of them on there, especially the small ones, they might become a little bit noticeable. But that's up to yourself. So finally now onto the articulation. And first off, build-wise this is quite strong. It's a little bit weak in the middle. We've got a little bit of flop going on just in the torso right here. This kit does have polycaps in its build, so it does mean it's not as like rough and tough or as strong as more recent builds like what we'd see with the Witch from Mercury kits, but it's still quite a robust little tank. Or should I say, cannon. So overall the articulation on this is very good, but a little bit on the basic side. There are a lot of joints with not much range of motion, so on the whole it's going to be a little bit limited, but that is what you would expect out of something like the gun cannon. So it is lower accurate. However, if you do like to overpose your kits in like crazy sort of ways, you will not get that here. It is limited at the waist, it's limited at the ankles a lot, and it's limited a little bit at the shoulders when you're raising up the arms, but of course you could flip that joint around. On the whole though, very, very good. So yeah, that is it for the review. For me, the gun cannon right here, this Kukuru's Doen's Island version gets gold tier. Visually, it's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful with a little bit of panel lining. This thing will look over the top. When it comes to the accessories, it's definitely fully loaded. We've got some great accessories and the attention to detail on these is just as high as the rest of the suit itself. And we do have some stickers in here as well, if you like those. Finally then, when it does come to the articulation, this is really the only place where this kit does drop the ball. So if you don't really care too much about over the top articulation, especially when it comes to a retro robot like this right here, then you can ignore that entirely. So yeah, gold tier, great kit. I got mine through Hobby Link Japan and the link is down there in the description. So as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I'll see you next time. Once again, this video right here and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including 10 Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.